The September release of Home Assistant is just around the corner, so today I'm going to show you some of the main features for this release. As always, it's based on the beta release, so some things might change or some features might get added to the release before it goes live on the 4th of September. It's a summer break for a lot of people at the moment, including people working on Home Assistant, which means that it's a smaller release this month than usual, so I won't take up much of your time, but there is one feature in particular that I want to show you. So let's dive in. Every month there are a lot of things that go on behind the scenes that we don't see as an actual new functionality in the release, but overall improves the quality and speed of development for Home Assistant. This month they have gone through all of the software code libraries used by nearly 3000 integrations and ensured that all of them have a proper open source license, which is important to make sure that these integrations can be maintained going forwards properly. Now let's talk about some new functionality. The new functionality for this month unsurprisingly relates to the user interface and it's fairly new sections view. The sections are already dynamic and the positioning changes based on the size of the screen that you're using. But before this release, the width of the sections themselves were static. This meant that without using something like horizontal stack cards, you could only have a maximum of two columns for some cards within each section, such as the tile card. Also the width of the section itself was fixed, but for this release they have added the ability to choose how wide the section is. If you click the pencil icon next to the section, you'll see a new size option. You could perhaps debate whether the word column is the best terminology here, but either way it basically means that one is the default width that you'll be used to, and two doubles the width of the section. I'm going to give you an example here, and I'm going to use the word blocks for my example, because I don't know the official terminology, but hopefully you'll know what I mean. So if you set the column size of a section to two, then it means that you can fit a maximum of eight blocks wide. Currently a tile card takes up a minimum of two blocks wide, meaning that you could have a maximum of four tile cards horizontally. A button takes up a minimum of one block though, meaning that you could have eight buttons horizontally. Personally, I would probably just have the name of these little blocks against the layout of the card to mean rows and columns, and then the section size setting could just allow people to select multiples of two for the column size. But it's still early days on the sections view, and I'm sure that the Home Assistant team will figure out what's best. And let me know in the comments what you think. The next one is a new integration, which allows you to use a different AI LLM to control Home Assistant. The Anthropic Conversation Agent means that you can use the Claude AI engine to control Home Assistant. I've seen some videos where you can provide screenshots of an app and it will provide you with code to create a working version of that app, which looks pretty cool. So it might be worth checking out this integration, but also worth checking out Claude generally if you haven't already. Now if you use the Energy Dashboard in Home Assistant, then there's an update this month that will probably be useful to you. The Energy Graph will now deduct the energy of devices that you're tracking from your total home energy usage. And this will give you a value of the devices that you aren't individually tracking. In my case, I'm fairly aware of where most of my energy consumption is going. Well, from what I can see, that's most of the major bits for this release. One of the new integrations that's worth noting is a new integration for the SM Lite devices. If you don't know what they are, then they are Zigbee coordinators which can work over USB, but also work over Ethernet or over Wi-Fi. These have become quite popular in the last year or so because it means that you don't have to locate your Zigbee coordinator near your Home Assistant instance, which might be locked away in a metal server room, near lots of inter interference or just in an inconvenient location. Most of the backwards incompatible changes for this month relate to the removal of functionality which was already deprecated six months ago. So as long as you've been taking care of your home assistant repair issues, then hopefully you won't have too many problems with the update for this month. Well, that's it for today. So please consider subscribing if you haven't already. And thanks until next time.